Now we're on page 99. We're at exercise 30. And this is another uh, interesting, interesting dysrhythmia, dysrhythmia rather. <laughs> Sorry. New tongue. I'm just trying to get out. Anyway, um, at a glance, this looks like a very fast rhythm, a tachycardic rhythm, and the heart rate is, in fact, um, somewhere between 150 and 180. And because the rhythm is irregularly irregular, there'll be some differences of opinion as to what the heart rate is. But again, you know, as I mentioned earlier, when you have an irregularly irregular rhythm like this, you want to um, um, have a heart rate range which is reflective of the patient's sort of average heart rate range. You don't want to have extremes like the heart rate is uh, 80 to 180. That just does not paint a clear picture. Because if you're dealing with someone who is unwell, the person who's receiving your report wants to know, are they unwell because they're tachycardic or bradycardic, in this case tachycardic, uh, and a range of 80 to 180 is just too wide. Uh, but a range of 150 to 180 says this heart rate is consistently fast, and this is probably why the patient's uh, pretty sick. But as I said, you know, you'll do your own measurements and you get some slightly different answers. Now, there are no clearly discernible P waves here. You may see some glitches, you know, like here and here. And as I said before, don't get sucked into the glitches. This rhythm is irregularly irregular and guaranteed you're going to see some artifact between uh, the QRS complexes, but there are no clearly discernible P waves here and therefore there's no PR interval. The QRS is narrow. It's uh, less than 0.12 second. The ratio is not applicable. The rhythm is irregularly irregular, and when you have an irregularly irregular rhythm, the interpretation is atrial fibrillation, and in this case with a ventricular response of between 150 and 180. Now, there's one little caveat I want to add here, and that is when you have a really fast atrial fibrillation, sometimes it's so fast that you cannot see the irregular irregularity. Now, here you can clearly. The, 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 the interval between... Um, you know, these two R waves is clearly different than the interval between these two. So we know we have an irregular rhythm. Um, but sometimes with atrial fib and the, the rhythm is so fast, uh, you know, especially if it's a new onset atrial fib, that it may be difficult to look at the ECG and to, to determine that it's irregular. Uh, but you can do one of two things. Number one, you can take, uh, you know, a piece of paper, you know, as I've uh, suggested before, and mark off some R waves on that paper and then slide that paper across uh, to see if the R waves are equidistant. Uh, but as you're monitoring the patient, the other thing you can do is turn up the volume on the ECG. And if you cannot see the irregularity on the ECG, you will definitely hear it uh, because that auditory uh, clue is very, very important. So, you know, what might look like beep, 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 beep on the paper um, when you listen to it, it's more like beep, 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 beep. So you'll definitely hear that auditory clue that it's irregularly irregular. And I will sometimes do that when I'm dealing with a rapid AFib because the treatment for rapid, unstable AFib is different from SVT. And so you want to be able to make that distinction. Um... I don't think there was anything else I wanted to say about atrial fib, except uh, the fact that um, the only time we cardiovert AFib is, uh, number one, if it's unstable, and two, if it's uh, of an onset less than 48 hours. Because if um, the patient's had AFib for longer than 48 hours, there's a high risk that there's clot formation within the atria. And if you cardiovert this patient from AFib into a sinus rhythm, those clots become dislodged and can lodge in the lungs and in the brain and cause, uh, you know, CVAs and pulmonary emboli, and that's certainly not good for the patient and looks bad on your resume.